what happens in type 1 diabetes hello i'm dr jimmy douglas and today's topic is type 1 diabetes this type 1 diabetes can happen at any age more commonly the incidence is noted in children peaks before the school going age and again peaks at around puberty diabetes type 1 is classified into two types immune mediated or type 1a and idiopathic type 1b in immune mediated or type 1a the body destroys its own cells which produce insulin that is pancreatic beta cells and we know that insulin is required for uptake of glucose into the cells for energy and to keep the blood glucose level within normal limits in this case we are seeing that the body is destroying insulin producing cells thereby we see a complete absence of insulin or low insulin why in some cases we see complete lack of insulin while in others we see low insulin that is because the rate of destruction of beta cells is variable so parents should be educated and also teachers at nurseries to be able to identify the disease at a very early stage and parents should be encouraged to check the children's blood glucose levels during routine investigations a young child who is urinating frequently drinking large quantities of water losing weight and becoming increasingly tired and ill is a classic picture of a child with new onset type 1 diabetes. Diabetes type 1 risk factors. It's hereditary in approximately one third of the cases and in two third of the cases, it is attributed to the environmental causes. Hereditary meaning it is due to genes being transmitted from parents to children. A child whose mother is type 1 diabetic has 3% chance of getting the disease. And if the father is type 1 diabetic, and it has 6% chance of getting the disease. Environmental factors which contributed to more than two thirds are due to observation that it is more common in Scandinavian countries like Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Iceland, and less common as we move closer to the equator. Also, the risk of type 1 diabetes increases in people who normally have low risk when they immigrate to the Northern Hemisphere. Scientists still couldn't pinpoint the exact environmental causes which might lead to type 1 diabetes. And increasingly evidence is about improvements in public health and reduced infections, especially parasitic infections, could lead to dysregulation of the immune system, which might lead to asthma and type 1 diabetes. Diagnosis of diabetes type 1. The following are essential for the diagnosis of diabetes type 1. Production of abnormally large amount of dilute urine, abnormally great thirst, weight loss associated with random plasma glucose of 200 mg per deciliter or more, plasma glucose of 126 mg per deciliter or more after an overnight fast on more than one occasion, ketonemia, abnormally high levels of ketones in the blood and presence of ketone in urine or both, presence of islet autoantibodies. The circulating levels of insulin are virtually absent and beta cells fail to respond to high glucose. So it is treated by giving insulin to prevent ketosis, to bring down elevated glucagon, to reduce blood glucose. Counseling is important and it has to be provided to the child along with parents and family as it's a lifelong disease and our aim is to prevent complications. Living with type 1 diabetes. It's important for type 1 diabetics to know that their pancreas is not secreting insulin. Even though there is enough blood glucose, it cannot be utilized because there is no insulin. And when there is no insulin, fat from the fat cells is released and it goes to the liver, gets converted into ketones and keto acids. And these act as an alternate source of fuel. And if this goes on and on, it leads to more keto acids being formed and it leads to low blood pH. Low pH is, it makes the blood acidic, which leads to diabetic ketoacidosis which can be fatal it's a medical emergency while you work with your doctor on medications and diet according to your preferences one should be getting plenty of fruits and vegetables whole grain and fiber and restricted sugar and solid fats it's necessary to keep a watch on symptoms of hypoglycemia a low blood glucose levels triggers the release of epinephrine or adrenaline the fight or flight hormone that's why a low blood glucose can cause a thumping heart sweating tingling and anxiety caution has to be taken in regard to exercise exercise may increase or decrease blood glucose levels while all these can take it all on mental health it's important to get counseling and the aim should be to keep the blood glucose level within normal limits and stay focused on the life goals type 1 diabetes cure while there is still no cure our aim should be to maintain the blood glucose levels within normal limits and while it teaches us to lead a disciplined life we must be focused on our life goals thank you for watching and see you in the next video